Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, friends. My name is DJ. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and today I want to talk about Zendikar Rising. I want to talk about the top 10 cards for Commander out of Zendikar Rising. This set is really good, but I'm only going to focus on the best and most interesting cards from the set. Let's jump right into our first card, Confounding Conundrum. This is a two-man enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, if that player played another land this turn, then they got to bounce one back to their hand. So this immediately shuts down extra ramping spells. It shuts down fetch lands. It can do a lot to a lot of different decks that really rely on ramping. Uh, this is number 10 because I think it's really interesting and I think it's a great approach to answering a problem that we have in our format, which is these green decks are running rampant, putting lands onto the battlefield. So let's have a very low cost hate enchantment on the battlefield to disrupt them. This could do nothing but draw a card, but I think that this is a pretty easy include in any deck that can use an enchantment. Like let's say you're running a Bant enchantment deck and this might turn into a 2-2 or draw you even more cards. <laughs> then that's a really good inclusion. And this could be a powerful card in your meta. I love that Wizards of the Coast is going in this direction. Next up, we have Yasharn, Implacable Earth. This elemental legendary boar is beefy. 4 CMC, 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic forest and a basic plains. Okay, that's drawing two cards. I know it doesn't draw you into your next big spell, but a 4 mana 4-4 four, four that draws you two cards is pretty solid. But again, there's more to it. Players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. This could shut down a lot of different strategies that your opponents could be relying on. Just think of black, just the color black, and how often they need to pay life to do stuff or to sacrifice something. I mean, there's tons of different decks out there that could get hosed by this boar. I really like cards that punish expensive mana bases. And so you can't pay life to activate abilities. That means shock lands, fetch lands become way, way worse. And this has tons of other applications. So I like this hate bear, hate boar, <laughs> that also draws you a couple cards. Next up, we have a similar card, Archon of Emeria. It's a two, three flyer for three, and each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Very limiting for a lot of different decks, and it could be limiting for white decks too. But I love that non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, Thalia, Heretic Cathar, has that effect on it, and it's really good. It slows down so many decks of opponents. I've found that card to be very, very good. Uh, and Archon of Emeria, like this could be even better. It's got evasion, you can crack in for a couple damage. I love that it's a flyer. But also, it can slow down your opponents that are planning to ramp big and play some other spells, like play a couple spells per turn, because this is like not nah, just one spell a turn. It could hurt you as well, though, because a lot of white decks have these little weenie white creatures. You know, Mentor the Meek is a good, you know, card draw outlet. So if you have one drops and two drops in your white deck, you might feel pretty bad if you can't double spell. Just something to consider, but I love the hate bear effects of these last two cards. Moving on, let's talk about a dragon, Leyline Tyrant. Two red red for a 4-4 flyer. Solid base stats right there. But it says you don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end. That is the same language on Omnath and on uh, Crufix. And that's a very powerful effect. We've seen both of those other cards uh, breed entire archetypes about storing up your mana and then spending them the next turn in order to really jump ahead of your opponents. You know, you kind of time walk yourself to save up all your mana, but then boom, you're casting an Eldrazi. I love that Red has this now. You can sort of just store up all that mana and then just spend it in a big fireball or a big creature. That's oh, great. Uh, it also has this added little bit of text. When it dies, you may pay any amount of red. When you do, it deals that much damage to any target. 
So if this ever dies and your plan is interrupted, you feel bad because you were definitely saving up this red mana for something, but whoever kills it, they're just gonna get a big fireball to the face of all that mana that you saved. It's, it's pretty cool, I'm a big fan. Moving on, we have Ancient Green Warden, a six mana, five, seven with reach. It's got a built-in Crucible of Worlds. You can play lands from your graveyard. Uh, if a land entering the battlefield causes an ability, a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this will slot into a lot of different decks, like Yarok really likes those triggered abilities triggering again. And if you're triggering them again, then you're gonna have all sorts of really cool landfall effects. This is an elemental, which means that this will fit into a lot of different Omnath decks, a lot of different uh, landfall elemental strategies. Uh, it's also got this built-in Ramanop Excavator, this built-in Crucible of Worlds, which can just gain value. Uh, I've found that Moldrotha coming down and just playing a land every turn to be quite good. It's just really solid. And so Ancient Green Warden allowing another effect like that into the game in just mono green that can go anywhere is really, really great. Uh, this might be a little bit different. Uh, this might be used in different situations than Ramanop Excavator because the Excavator really helps smooth out your draws. You know, you get to play it on turn four or five and stuff like that. This is a big, beefy elemental, and so sometimes if you're doing uh, land shenanigans, you wanna bring that online a little bit faster than turn six, but again, redundancy in this area is pr still pretty good. Lithiform Engine is a four mana legendary artifact. You can pay two and tap to copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. You can three and tap to copy target instant and sorcery spell you control new targets for the copy, or pay four and tap to copy target permanent spell you control. The copy becomes a token. Oh, this just copies everything. This card actually has me thinking of Rico of Two Reflections. You know, five mana, pretty delicate creature, but if you pay is it after you cast a spell, you get to copy it. If you pay Simic after you cast a creature spell, you can copy it up too. So the rates are a little bit more on Lithiform Engine, but this can slot into any deck. Artifacts are definitely a little bit more resilient than, than Riku. Uh, I also like that this can copy activated and triggered abilities. So this can kind of go into anything. It also can copy target permanent. So you can put this in decks and copy enchantments. You know, you can copy uh, artifacts. You can copy those creatures. I mean, you. It's gonna be difficult to copy Planeswalkers, but you can copy their activated or triggered abilities. I feel like this is just a really cool engine to be able, it's literally in the name, engine. But this is a really cool engine to sort of complement whatever deck you have. I feel like this can slot in to a lot of decks that have tons of mana and dirtle. That's like exactly what Commander is about. This is a card built for Commander. I'm so, so excited. All right, let's take this from your opponent and use it for our own means. Thieving Skydiver, one of blue for a 2-1 flyer. By the way, Flying Men, great. Like Tempo decks that exist, great. Like Flying Matters decks, like all of these Merfolk decks, Rogue decks, like this can slot in so well to all of those decks, but it's even better because you can kick it for X and steal your opponent's artifacts. And if they're equipment, they get sucked onto Thieving Skydiver. Oh, it's so good. I'm excited to play this in cube where I can steal Moxin, but just think about this. Three mana, steal your soul ring. Everyone has a soul ring. You know, steal your swift foot boots, steal your, steal your uh, sword. I mean, there's so many pieces of equipment floating around out there. Uh, Dak Faden is undeniably excellent in Commander. And Dak Faden might have the ability to come down and steal sort of anything, even if it's big. But a lot of the time what you're stealing with Dak Faden is like mana ramp, you know, the thing that the engine that your opponents are using, you know. But Thieving Skydiver comes down and hits the battlefield and takes whatever you want and has the flexibility of being a great attacker. So Forsaken Monument is the callback to the Eldrazi on this plane. I love that it's not really highlighted, it's just in the distance, like 
oh, this is something in the past, because I didn't want a lot of Eldrazi in my face with this set anyway. So good job, Wizards, on the flavor there. But they did a great job on this card too. Five mana Legendary Artifact, it double pumps your colorless creatures, like a Tempered Steel. Uh, that's a powerful effect, and Tempered Steel didn't even work on all the Eldrazi. Like, there are so many ways to make Eldrazi spawn and Eldrazi scions that suddenly you can drop this and they become real threats. You know, that those mana batteries suddenly can turn sideways. So good. Uh, but then whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, you add an additional colorless. So on top of this huge anthem, we have a mana doubler in these colorless decks. Whew, that's so good. I think the mana doublers are really, really strong. And a lot of time they're four or five mana uh, or even six mana to be able to get that doubling effect out there. Right now you're getting it for five, you know, and it says tap a permanent. So that means that all of those mana rocks get to tap for one more. That soul ring taps for three. So good. Whenever you cast a color of spell, you gain two life. Okay, it can provide a little bit of a buffer. You know, I'm not gonna be mad at two life, two life, two life, two life here and there, but really the power is on these first two abilities. It's just my thumbs up for Forsaken Monument. You're gonna be able to drop this and then drop an Eldrazi next turn in colorless decks. It's gonna be very fun. Let's keep going with Akiri, Fearless Voyager. One red-white for a legendary core warrior. It's a 3-3, three, three, and whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. Okay, so it's only one card per turn in Boros, so it's like, I'd like to draw a lot of cards, but still, you can almost always draw a card. Just send a creature in there. But it also has this added backup. You may unattach an equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap that creature, and it gains indestructible until end of turn. Ooh, see, I do really like that, this ability to protect your team. Like, you know, you equip them up and, you know, you've invested a lot in that creature once you've cast the creature, cast the equipment, equipped up the equipment. You know, it sucks to get that creature destroyed. But just having that insurance policy of unattach, I'll save you. That's really good, okay? So you have a card draw engine and a protection engine for all that. Um, stuff on the battlefield. And equipment have a good way of keeping value across a long course of a game, making smaller creatures relevant. I think that this is going to slot into a lot of different decks and be a fun, you know, commander on in her own. All right, before I get to my number one card, I want to talk about a few cards and how powerful they are. It's these flip lands. Like, all of the cards that are spells that have lands on it, are so, so good. Uh, I've talked a lot about how I feel like cycling lands are way better than people give them credit for, because at the cost of entering the battlefield tapped, which is a real cost, and if you're super competitive, that might be too much of a cost, because your deck is so tightly tuned that you can't take a turn off and fit it in anywhere. But for the average Magic player, you can find a way to drop a tapped land. Uh, but later on in the game, getting rid of a tapped land, getting rid of a land that you don't need in terms of a spell is incredibly powerful. And these do this effect so well. It's not just a random card from the top of your deck. It is an effect that can synergize with your deck. I am so excited for this. Like, let's look at Valakut Awakening. This is an instant card that does like a Winds of Change that could also be a mountain. That's awesome. And so this can replace a land slot and increase your spell density by doing something that you're already looking to do. You know, you got a Nekusar deck or, you know, you just got any old red deck. Uh, I like this Tangled uh, Floral Florelahedron, there we go, uh, which is just an overpriced mana dork or a land. So if you need to hit your land drops, you hit your land drops. If you have your land drops, then you can ramp into something bigger. Of course, those are some of the, the easier to understand ones. We've got like big splashy effects too. Amiria's Call, like make angels, make things indestructible. You can even have an untapped land. Like these cards are so strong. And I think that they're gonna be, actually I think a few of them are gonna be like super staples for forever. Uh, I think that Seagate Restoration is going to be really, really good 
because sometimes you just get so much uh, mana that you just need to invest it in something. I think that the big spells are going to be better for Commander, I mean, obviously. But there's one uh, green one that I think, I mean, this Mammoth is going to be really good. It's going to be splashing a lot. But it's the, the regrowth. There we go. This Balaged Recovery. I think that this is going to be a card that goes in so many different decks because if you need to land drop, you get your land drop. If it's in the late game and you don't need land drops, then like you get something back. You're going to have something relevant in your graveyard. This card is going to be very, very good. And I think that you should, I think you should scoop it up. I, I think that even though it's an uncommon, it's going to be printed like crazy. Like this card will be a couple dollars in a couple years and you're definitely going to want to take care of it. All right. I've talked a lot about my other stuff. Let's talk about my favorite art. <laughs> I haven't gotten to the top one yet. Let's talk about my favorite art. I got to give a shout out to Wiley Beckert and just the art that she's been doing is so good. Look at this soul shatter right here. It's amazing. I mean, I was impressed by the art, by this finishing blow we got out of Corset 21. I'm like, yes, this looks good. And then I realized that we were getting a couple pieces of art from her during this set. And I am just so thrilled by the pieces of art uh, that we're getting out of Wiley Beckert. So shout out there. All right. Number one card in Zendikar Rising is Valakut Exploration. Valakut Exploration. Two and a red for an enchantment landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. Okay. Uh, this is impulse draw though, because it's gonna be moved from exile into your graveyard in just a little bit. At the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard. Then Valakut Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. Okay, so card draw, great. The fact that you can play them means that you can play other lands. And when you play another land, then you exile another card with Valakut Exploration. It does let you um, exile the card and then only puts it into your graveyard and does this damage effect at the, at the beginning of your end step, which means that you can crack fetches or do certain landfall effects on your opponent's turn and still have access to these exiled cards. Thumbs up. Now, we like the card draw. Card draw is great, but what makes this better than all the other red impulse draw? Well, it's this damage dealing stuff. Um, Chandra's ability to, you know, exile a card and then it deals two damage, you know, if you decide not to play it. Thumbs up, fine, good job. But we are a big mana format. And the idea that if you can't play your seven drop and you just let it go to your graveyard and you've then dealt seven to each opponent, this thing just did 21 damage. That's amazing. Think about how much damage like a Yuriko deck does or a Vile Smasher deck does, you know? And those are delicate creatures that have to jump through hoops. This is an enchantment where you just have to hit land drops. I could imagine this ending a game. Like you play this enchantment, you <laughs> drop a fetch land, crack it, that's two cards exiled. Like you could do like 30 or 40 damage to the table across a couple turns, across a couple land drops. This is so, so good. It's gonna kill people. You are gonna kill people with this card. I love it so much. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this top 10 list. Uh, there are a lot of good cards in this set, and these are the 10 that really perked my interest, but I'm positive that I missed some of your favorites. So let me know in the comments down below your favorite cards from this set. I wanna thank you so much for joining me. I also wanna thank Cool Stuff Inc. Click on the link in the description. It'll take you over there. You get to see a secret card that I have in the link. And if you use the coupon code JUMBO5, you'll save 5% off your order. My patrons are amazing. They help me out every single day. Thank you, patrons. You make all of this possible. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy Zendikar Rising. I know I will. Bye-bye, everyone.